Hey there, y'all. Which Christian rock band recording in the 1980s released three really good albums that were kind of ahead of their time, musically and even lyrically, in terms of the way they approached the spiritual content and the message they were relaying? They recorded on a record label known for the color red, and one of their albums was kind of a defining album for the 1980s for many of us in Christian rock. Who am I talking about? I'll tell you all about it in this week's Album of the Week, coming up on the other side. Hey there to all my fellow Christian rock, Christian music, and just plain music fans out there. Tim Risto here, host of the Creative Christians Podcast, welcoming you back to another Tim Talks Christian Rock and another album of the week. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and share it with someone you love. Also, if you have not heard the Creative Christians podcast, please head on over to my Buzzsprout page. The link is on screen now, and it's also in the description below. Check it out. It's all about Christians and creatives and how their faith influences their work and creativity. So last time in my first Album of the Week episode, we focused on some brand new music. And this week, we're going to go back to the past and look at some classic Christian rock from the 1980s. I'm talking about this band and album right here, Prodigal's Electric Eye from 1984. This is a classic album of 1980s Christian rock. And it is a personal favorite of mine, as I mentioned. This actually was the second album I ever purchased after getting into Christian music. I had it on cassette, uh, never owned the vinyl until more recent years here when I picked up this Girder uh, retroactive remastered uh, vinyl edition here. But I did have the cassette and played that thing to death. I found over the years, I've seen this in a lot of people's collection. And they've often been people who really don't care much about Christian music, maybe don't listen to it, maybe aren't familiar with the artists, but somehow or another they've stumbled across this album, listened to it, and loved it, and I found it in their collection. Great, great album. Many of you may have this in your collection as well, but I'm betting also there's a lot of you that have never heard of Prodigal. Prodigal is an Ohio-based band that released three albums, as I mentioned. The first was a self-titled album, Prodigal, released in about 82, I believe. Then came Electric Eye here in 84, and that was followed by Just Like Real Life in 85, I believe it was, which, to me, built upon Electric Eye really well. And it was kind of like uh, Electric Eye Part Two in in some ways, just musically. It, it was a natural extension of Electric Eye, but also a progression on that. It was about similar themes, but also took things to a different level. So I love that album, too. I was really sad to find out that was their last album and that they wouldn't be recording anymore after that, uh, which is just a shame. But we've got three great albums by this band. They were all really great albums. Um, you could say they're uh, slightly inconsistent from album to album, in that there's some really strong rock elements. The first album probably is a little milder, a little softer album. Uh, Electric Eye took it up a notch and became much more of a rocker, although there are some mellower things, especially on side two, some mellower tracks. And then the third album was much more electronic and pretty much heavier rocking throughout, although, again, there are a few mellow tracks in there. I don't really want to call them ballads, but just some softer tunes. All three albums have a whole lot of stuff to really love and appreciate about them, musically and lyrically. They were kind of ahead of their time, musically, and had some really creative songs and music and lyrical content that has stood the test of time really well. Um, but they're all really good. It's hard to dislike any of them just because 
the quality of the songwriting and the lyrics and the band's performance on these albums is so good. So I love all three of the albums. There's a lot to like about them. Electric Eye really is their defining kind of masterpiece, you could say, because it's it's relatively consistent throughout, and it's just got a, a special sound, a special lyrical content to it. Lloyd Bullman's songwriting and lyrical writing on so many of the songs is so strong and so good. Obviously, with the title Electric Eye and that great cover art, it gives you an immediate idea of what this album is all about, right? And back then in the 80s, you were becoming more and more obsessed with technology and the influx of technology in our lives. And as we look back today, it seems pretty mild by today's standards and what we're dealing with with uh, technology and you know lack of privacy and all sorts of things creeping in because of technology. Back then, those were some of the fears that were creeping in already. And this album cover kind of showcases the power of technology, of, of the electronic eyes that were watching us, it seemed to be, in so many ways. But that was kind of part of the obsession in the 80s, too, is beginning to feel more and more of technology creeping into our lives in so many different ways. And that's really what this album deals with on a social level, provides both an outlet for kind of expressing some of those fears, but it also deals with a lot of great spiritual themes that come off of that and deals with them with some good biblical concepts and, uh, and wisdom. So that's a quick overview. So let's hop over to a couple things online. We're going to look at uh, a review of the album, and then we'll also look at... Um, a little bit of a retrospective by someone involved with the band and just kind of um, check out why this album is so unique and special. And then we'll look at it track by track as well. So let's go ahead and start on a site called Pop Dose. Okay, this article here is uh, Reissue Review Prodigal Electric Eye. This is actually from October of 2014. So it's an older article and it's really about, it's kind of a mini review, quick overview of their 30th anniversary three CD set that came out in 2014, which actually looks like it was a pretty cool set. I missed out on it and unfortunately didn't know about it at the time, found out about it later and it was all gone already. It sold out pretty quickly from what I understand. I don't even know how many copies they released of it, but uh, it was all three of their albums with some art cards and things like that. Looked to be a pretty nice set. So that's really what this is, but the, I want to highlight just a couple things from this article because it actually gives a nice little overview. For those of you not familiar with Prodigal, uh, we'll just punch in here. It says, Prodigal had the unenviable, unenviable lot of being a great band in not so great times, in a genre that often rejected greatness for safety and conformity. Thankfully, many of the barriers that separated music that fell under the contemporary Christian music banner from open-minded listeners have broken down over the years. People could experience the music as music, and art was allowed to stand or fall on that merit. A lot of records from that time do not stand up. The fear has been that because of its absence of availability, talking about Prodigal's back catalog, leading to an impression of unworthiness, the music of Prodigal would be lumped in with them. This set ref, uh, rectifies that false analysis. So for a while, it was really difficult to find their music. You know, once you got past the 80s, the albums really were tough tougher to find. Most of them were not, I don't know if any of them actually were released on CD, and uh, so it was very difficult to find find their albums until 2014 when they released this set, which again, because of that lack of availability, this set sold out very quickly. Since then, however, their albums have been re-released on, uh, on Girder Records or Retroactive Records, so all three of them on CD and then Electric Eye on vinyl, all remastered. Still hope someday we'll see the first and third albums re-released on remastered vinyl, but we'll see. Um, okay, so let's go back here. Okay, that's all well and good, but why is the music worth your time? 
in the hands of Lloyd Bowman, vocalist, keys, Fields, Rick Fields, vocals and guitars, Dave Workman, vocals and drums, which, by the way, that's one of the unique things about Prodigal as well, is you've really, it has three vocalists, which is kind of unique. Lloyd Bowman did vocals on some songs, Rick Fields did vocals on some songs, and Dave Workman did vocals uh, as well. So they split duties depending upon the the style of the song or the music they were doing, which is kind of kind of cool. Anyway, Dave Workman vocals and Mike Wilson bass. The object was never about preaching in the way so many of their peers did, rightly or otherwise. The songs were about life in modern times, about being in the midst of it all, and about coping with its indifference. They never relied upon cliches or easy bumper sticker anthems they never pandered to pop music, girl world shortcuts. And even more importantly, they were a rock band, a real band that played with passion and skill, with an occasional prog rock feel, but a capacity to play to an arena. That all came together on Electric Eye, and I would agree. That's, that's why this is kind of their masterpiece album in a way, because it just... Everything about the band really was working on all fronts with Electric Eye. It's just a great piece of music, great writing, the lyrics, the music, the band members, the playing. It's just all there. Even the uh, the studio, the mix and everything I think is really is really quite good. Sadly, Boldman, Lloyd Bowman, who was the vocals and kind of the primary songwriter and, and uh, main force, I think, in many ways, behind Prodigal, Sadly, Bowman would not see the reissue uh, of these albums as he passed away in early 2014 due to long-standing medical conditions. Yet he and all the members of the band understood one thing. You make good work. You don't make propaganda. You don't approach things from any place less than honesty on the ground as a human being. If you do that, you deserve to have your voice heard. So anyway, kind of nice. That was by um, D.W. Dunphy, I believe is how it's pronounced. He's a writer, artist, and musician. Uh, I've seen him all over the internet. He he writes a lot, and I think he produces his own music as well. Kind of a unique guy. Let's go ahead and hop on over to angelicwarlord.com next. This is a well-known site for those of you that are familiar with Christian music. It does a number of uh, reviews of Christian albums, particularly in... Uh, the harder rock and heavy metal vein. Okay, so I'm just going to highlight a few things here. They gave it an 80% rating from this 2018 release, uh, re-release from Retroactive. All right, here we go. Despite the fact Cincinnati, Ohio-based Prodigal was musically ahead of its early to mid-80s time, it did not always receive similar accolades as its contemporaries in the form of recognition and commercial success, and by and large, and sadly, has fallen beneath the radar of the current hard music landscape. One would not be out of line to suggest, for instance, that cohorts from the period such as the Garmon Key, Petra, and Sweet Comfort Band potentially attracted a wider audience and were household names to the greater extent in comparison. Prodigal, on the other hand, here's, and this is kind of significant here. Prodigal, on the other hand, did the better job stretching and pushing itself from an artistic standpoint by the manner in which it stepped outside the worship and evangelism boundaries that typified the contemporary Christian music scene of the era. Yes. All right, track by track. Let's go ahead and get into the individual songs and the actual music on the album itself. Start looking at each one of the tunes on this great classic album of the week. Scene of the Crime is our leadoff song on this album, Electric Eye. It starts off with the wail of an ambulance siren. It fades out into a very aggressive guitar sound shortly after followed by Lloyd Bowman's wonderful rock vocal sound. It's just a great lead-off track for the album and immediately sets the tone that this is going to be a hard-rocking album. This is probably actually one of the more overt songs in terms of using some spiritual uh, language in it, you know, because Prodigal often does not. They, they got their message across very clearly, even in spiritual terms, by being relatively subtle 
And again, not using a ton of church speak, uh, but still getting their point across rather effectively. But this song actually, and it's great because it's a leadoff song, is more overt in that. And uh, I'll show you a quick clip here because this is also one of the songs that Prodigal produced uh, a music video for. And Lloyd Bowman, I believe, wrote and directed pretty much all of the music videos, I think, that that, uh, Prodigal ever did. And they did one for this, one for the next track, Fast Forward, and I think one for Boxes, which is the last track on the album, too. I wish they'd done ones for Electric Eye and Neon, but I don't believe they did. So uh, anyway, play a clip from this, because here in this clip, uh, you get a, a feel for some of the more spiritual language that comes across in this song. to track two fast forward is a reminder of the passage of time in a world that is always pushing us to keep moving at a faster and faster pace this is a mid-tempo pace track it has workman's vocals with a vocal synthesizer and also has the bass and lead guitars and keyboards that all end up blending as the song reaches its crescendo To me, this just feels like the perfect second track for an album, and it's a great follow-up to Scene of the Crime. One more suburban blast off. Hear the countdown. One, two, three, four. Masks is the third track, a more piano and guitar heavy track that I'll talk about in a minute, but that has, in keeping with its theme, a very theatrical feel to it, musically and lyrically. I've always loved Boldman's passionate vocals on this one. He just sells it. Which really brings me to why this is one of my favorite albums and why I'm selecting it as album of the week. Because for me, this album got me into Christian music in a deeper way than I had before. This is the second album I ever purchased of Christian rock music. I may have mentioned this in some other videos, but I initially got into Christian music through my future at the time, back at the time was going to be my future brother-in-law, and the DCE at a church that uh, my father was pastor at, and that we were attending, of course. So the DCE had a bunch of Christian rock albums. I started listening to him. He gave a bunch to me, and I got into Christian rock that way. Then the first cassette I ever bought was Russ Taft's Walls of Glass, which for those of you familiar with it is not a heavy Christian rock album. Uh, It's more soulful, and it's got some pop tunes and some R&B flavored stuff, and it's more what they called CCM, you know, contemporary Christian music, but it's not really Christian rock. There's a little bit of rock on there. Taff would go on and make more stronger albums later that would be a little more Christian rock oriented, including Metals and his uh, self-titled album, Russ Taff, which is one of my favorites. But anyway, that was the first one I bought just out of curiosity and by recommendation, I think, by my brother-in-law and others. 
And uh, I love that. That was the first cassette I ever owned. But the second one I ever bought was Prodigal Electric Eye. And I loved it. That one spoke to me on so many levels as a teenager back in the day. And I was looking for, as a teen who grew up in the church and was used to a lot of church speak and church lingo and, you know, was used to, you know, most of the Bible stories and, and uh, you know, the Christianese and things like that. I was looking for Christian rock that spoke to me more as a teenager, not looking for all the overt evangelizing type of music and lyrical content, as much as I was looking for things that spoke to me where I was at as a teen in my faith walk and in my life. So things that weren't so overt, but more deeper and introspective. And to be honest, Prodigal Electric Eye met that in so many ways because it's not an overt evangelism album. It's more about living your life in the days of when this was written, you know, in the 80s, and how to face different things in your life. And again, using spiritual wisdom, biblical wisdom, as the background for which to kind of address it. And uh, it does it with very creative lyrics and in a way that's just very true to life, real life. That's what appealed to me. It wasn't, you know, singing about different Bible stories. It was talking about us in our life today and how do we deal with different things. For example, just quickly, you know, one of the songs on here is called Masks. And it starts out with kind of this heavy piano bit and then moves into a little bit more guitar, heavier guitar, rock sound. But it was really talking about the masks that we wear in life and how we put on these fake personas for people. And we cover up the true nature of what God gave us to be, to live ourselves and our lives in Christ. And that spoke to me uh, because the lyrics were not churchy or preachy. They were more so about living your life and recognizing that God made you to be someone special and not to always put on all these false, fake masks in our lives. That's the type of stuff that spoke to me as a teen and I think did to a lot of people. And that's why this album is in so many people's collections because it speaks to you on a very real level and kind of like the song masks it isn't a put on of this churchy kind of facade it just talks to you in a very real genuine way about things that uh, especially as as a teen i was facing and found refreshing to to be able to hear music that was this good and engage with lyrics that were this introspective and down to earth. That's why I love this album. Just what I need is the album's fourth track and a perfect progression musically from Masks. Nice rocker, but very simple and straightforward in its messaging. It reminds us, through irony, that we don't need everything the world tries to sell us. One of the lyrics here, the man on TV tells me I'd be someone new drive his car and use his shampoo, designer dog food, Teflon socks, spandex jeans, all on sale and just what I need. Irresistible, indispensable, unbelievable, and it's just what I need. It's so practical, so affordable, unavoidable. Well, it's just what I need. Fifth track is Emerald City, which uses an opening soundbite from the Wizard of Oz film to lead into a slow to mid-paced pop-styled tune about looking for Jesus. The lyrics here are pretty straightforward as well, but I love them.
some people don't like this track as much, but personally, I love the way they use the film analogy with the soundbite from The Wizard of Oz to tie in with the electric eye theme of the album. And the music is a nice full band effort that ends really smoothly. It's a great side one closer as far as I'm concerned. And it makes the contrast to the much heavier rocking title track and side two opener, which is a personal favorite, and I think one of Prodigal's greatest tunes, Electric Eye, all the more intense. heavy with keyboards in the background and drums laying down this great timekeeping foundation this track defines prodigal at their most creative simply a classic and one of the reasons why prodigal is so great on this album The sound effects of an 80s video game arcade begin as Electric Eye ends and Bobby begins. This track is a nice AOR style tune with Rick Fields on vocals that again really epitomizes the diversity of Prodigal's rock pop stylings. A great track that follows up nicely from Electric Eye. Shout It Out is next, probably the song I listen to the least from the album. It's upbeat, very positive pop track with a shouted out chorus that simply reminds us to share the gospel. Lyrics read, how can you move when your feet won't go? How can you speak when your heart says no? If you've got the light, you need to show it now. You've got to shout it out. Shout it out. Then, the synthesized and lyrical masterpiece of Neon fades in, which, next to Electric Eye, is probably the greatest track by Prodigal. This is one of the tracks that I listened to over and over again as a teen. Still love it today. Angelic Warlord says it best, so let me just bump back over to their review and read here. And I quote, Chilling, theatrical, and pensive is the impression left as keyboards and piano dance its length to Boldman's at times spoken and others persuasive vocal delivery. The memorable refrain, I just want to shine like neon in the city tonight, echoes over pounding drums, hinting lightly of Pink Floyd. Nobody, and I mean nobody, was doing anything like this in the mid-80s Christian hard music scene. And it's tracks like this that were why Prodigal was ahead of its time artistically, lyrically, musically, and spiritually. Boxes is an acoustic guitar-led piece. It's a great slow tempo piece and another tune from the album that the band produced a music video for. I'm not a big ballad fan and I even hesitate to call this a ballad, but I love this track a lot.
leads out into a brief but almost haunting version of the hymn, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, that closes out the album. I absolutely love this all-too-brief rendition. It's done in a breathy, vocalized style with keyboard backup that fits in perfectly with the electronic, you know, urban musical feel and electric eye theme of the entire album. In some ways, it feels like an extension of neon musically, at least a little bit to me. But either way, it's a great way to close out a classic album. So there you go. There's my album of the week, Prodigal, and their album, Electric Eye. What do you think? What do you think of this album? What do you think of this band? Is this an album and a band that's been a favorite of yours for a while? Um, Let me know if this was something that was special to you back in the 80s or if it's something that you've uh, stumbled across in more recent years. Uh, This, for me, is just a highlight album of Christian rock. And again, this is an album, like I said, that I've seen in a lot of people's collection who are not fans of Christian rock necessarily or not familiar with Christian rock, but yet they have this album in their collection and they love it. I think it appeals to a broader audience, partly because of the way its lyrical content is a little more deeper and more just down to earth. And so it doesn't broadcast that it's a Christian album, but if you listen to it, I think you're going to come away with that without a doubt. Love to hear your thoughts. If you are just discovering this album for the first time through this video, let me know what you think. Go check out the album Prodigal. I believe it is on most streaming sites. If not, head on over to girdermusic.com and pick yourself up a copy or to boonsoverstock.com. Go to the Prodigal Band website. I'll put all that information in the description links uh, in the description so that you can track these places down and listen to some prodigal but if prodigal has been a part of your personal music library and you have uh, an association with the history of this music and this band tell me about why they were important to you why you love prodigal and why electric eye maybe struck a chord with you as well Anyway, that's all I got today. That's this week's album of the week, Prodigal, Electric Eye, from 1984. Go out and listen to some great Christian rock music, and above all else, stay in God's Word. Blessings, y'all. See you next time.